On my way to Salt Lake City this fall, I stopped in a free BLM campground in southern Idaho, and I met a guy named Scott Warner and his suspicious white van. And this van has some really unique qualities and ideas in it that um, that I think need to be shared, uh, things that I haven't seen anybody do before. So I'm sure you're going to enjoy this one. Um, it's a self-built, uh, fairly simple, and something that is within reach of a lot of people. Well, my name's Scott, and this is the Suspicious White Van. Um, as my friends kind of nicknamed it, and I kind of went with it from there. October, November-ish of 2015 is whenever I purchased this. It's an old ADA um, transport van, handicapped transport van, um, set up for wheel or transport wheelchairs. So whenever I got it, there was nothing on the inside other than the tie-down straps and the rails and everything where you could go in and strap down the wheelchairs. And it had the, hand, the uh, wheelchair lift on the back. So one of the things I kept looking for, and I'd been looking for a van for a couple of months, was something that would support my hobbies while on the road. <laughs> and everything I looked at, I couldn't quite get a motorcycle in if they were pre-built without having to do a lot of deconstruction and reconstruction, which didn't make a lot of sense. So I found this for a good deal and thought it'd be a good way to start. The main points that I wanted was to make sure that I could get the motorcycle inside <laughs> and be able to sleep in there with the motorcycle. I wanted to make sure and have some type of bathroom facility in there. Um, and have enough power to run a mobile office when I needed to. And everything kind of got built around that, those components. I think you kind of have to find your top three or five things that you want, yep. and then all the rest of it's kind of gravy. This van was built mainly to support my hobbies. And as you can see, one of the main hobbies is the motorcycle that I travel with. And I've got a couple other motorcycles that I keep in a garage space. So I've rented out my house, but I was able to keep a garage space where I can keep um, a couple of my other hobby um, pieces of hobby equipment. The trouble with getting a big bike like that into any type of vehicle is how do you get it up in there? And the tighter the space, the bigger the motorcycle, the more likelihood it's going to fall on you. You're going to fall with it. You're going to get pinned. And you still have to be able to, I still had to be able to sleep with it in there. So I took the wheelchair lift, which is a hydraulic lift. It lowers all the way down to the ground, will raise up. Um, modified the ramp where it's the length of a motorcycle. So I can back the motorcycle on, lift it up, and then I can walk inside the van, take it from the back, and just pull it right into the van. So I'm never having to be right beside the motorcycle. So the likelihood of it falling or crushing me, and I travel mainly solo, um, was a big concern. So that allows me to get it up in there. The chalk in the back is removable. So whenever I go to load the motorcycle in, I just back it into here. I move the wheel chalk out of the way. I pull the motorcycle in. Then I can come around to the front, put the chalk back in, strap it down. And I've got mounts going into the wheelchair ramp, which goes into the frame. So it's about as solid as you can get mounting it inside a vehicle. The other nice thing about this is it kind of allows me a deck, <laughs> which I've actually used to fish off of in the past. You can back right up, stretch it out, and if you've got a little ramp down to the water, you can fish right off of it. It also makes for a really nice shower pan as well. So if you want to shower outside, there's mesh all down here. So I've got a hot water heater on the back door. And then as far as the shower goes, all I have to do is take the shower head, fit it right in there, tap into the bottom, hook up a propane tank if I decide I need a hot shower. On a day like this, when you're already sweating, you just take a cold shower most of the time. And I can wrap a shower curtain around the outside if I do need a little bit of privacy. But this allows the water to drain out, and then you get to step right into the van. So all the cabinets I built myself, they're all out of pine. So I wanted to go with something lightweight. Um, and I carry all my tent camping gear and everything in here. So whenever I do decide to go out on an adventure on the motorcycle, if I want to go moto camp for a few days, I can set it up that way. Um, so under this side over here is all of the plumbing for the water, um, the pump, the accumulator, and everything else that runs up into the sink. And the sink is a... 10 inch deep bar sink, which I really like having a deep sink. 
um, just provides a lot of space when you're trying to get things in there and clean and other things. And then I decided to go the easy route and I just have a five gallon um, jerry can or underneath there for my gray tank, which allows me to dump that relatively easily without having to find dump stations. The countertops were just an experiment, but turned out really well. Industrial cutting board like you would find in any butcher shop or restaurant which is really easy to sanitize. I just spray it down with bleach or vinegar solution um, every day and that cleans everything up. Um, the other component is I bat winged this so it will open up and then the doors fold out and that allows me to have a bathroom in here. So I just use a cassette toilet which again is really nice because I can dump it at any rest stop or rest area. I also have a little shower pan here that has a five gallon gray tank underneath it. And then I went ahead and put in some cover over the fabric and a little shower curtain. So I can rinse off inside as well. And then I just hooked the shower wand right up to the faucet, which is right beside it. So no need of having a second faucet here. So it has the same type of garden hose type connector that the rear has. I have a Dometic 12 volt fridge. So I have a 1500 watt inverter under the cabinet um, and underneath the cabinet are three 129 amp hour sun extender deep cycle solar batteries and they are powered by, or charged by two 160 watt grape solar solar panels and I'm running it through a Bogart um, charge controller and the Bogart trimetric battery monitor which for me has worked out to be a great little setup runs the microwave, runs my Instant Pot, which I'm a huge fan of. Another thing that I decided to do was I was going to build upper cabinets. I built all the lower cabinets, but I liked having the headroom in here, and you'll find out why that's important in a minute. I decided to go ahead and go with bungee netting. I looked all around online trying to figure out different ways, you know, find the different manufacturers of it, and they were all to find sizes unless you wanted to custom order sizes which got really expensive and I was trying to figure out the best way to do this so what I ended up doing was going on eBay and buying golf course driving range netting because it's the three quarter inch squares as opposed as opposed to the baseball netting and then just quarter inch bungee cord and that way I could cut the netting to any size I wanted to I just use cable um, cable hangers which you can find in any hardware store in the electrical department to hang it up and the nice thing about this is it keeps it tucked in and keeps everything nice and quiet when you're driving down the road plus it's really easy to see where you're, the main stuff that you go for every day is I've got storage up above the driver's seat and passenger seat for all of my clothing and everything both the front seats pivot which allow me plenty of seating in here as well as being able to sit on the countertops and everything um, LED lighting in the top which swivels which are fantastic. I've replaced the standard bulbs with LED bulbs as well. There is a fantastic fan in here also. You don't see the hole for it. What I did because I had the rear AC unit is I wanted to be able to keep this. The other thing is the van's a little spread out. Instead of having multiple fans what I was able to do is put one fan in the center, tie it into the ducting that the AC unit uses which also keeps me from having the hole inside and having to have some type of shade or cover on it. And then whenever I flip it on, it actually ducks or vents out of where the AC would be pumping into. Um, and I think it kind of made for a nice clean install. And then I can shut different vents off if I need it to you know, take more ventilation in one particular area. Whenever it comes time for bed, all I have to do is pull the hammock out. Clip it into a D-ring in the back, one in the front, and you have a bed. You'll notice I've got multiple rings up here. Actually allows me to put one hammock on this side and I can sleep a second hammock on this side, which I've done many times when I've had friends coming to visit. And when you back the motorcycle in, the front wheel's here, handlebars are here, low point in the seat is here, which means with the motorcycle sitting down the middle, you can still get into the hammock swing right here and be above the motorcycle. This allows you the ability to at least be able to sleep in here without having to unload everything. A little tight and a little cramped, but you can still do so. Also with the motorcycle loaded in, you can still get the sink. I can still get into the bathroom storage area and everything as well. Still pivot the front seat around, still get at the refrigerator, 
and all the other things you can just move the back wheel back and forth which allows you the ability to go down both sides of it one of the things that i have started doing a lot on the road is mixing different drinks and venting different drinks and those types of things so in here i have my obviously my um shot glasses which these are silly pint shot glasses which are silicone and are fantastic um, and then i've got different types of little silly pint glasses as well as a couple of traditional glasses that i um, try to keep from breaking as i go bouncing this thing down the road and i've got different mixing equipment and everything through here the big thing that every that seems to get a lot of comments is the little mixing roll with all of the bar components in it. This gives me my muddler, strainer, mixing spoon, and then I keep my bar components. So in here are gonna be different vodkas, gins, whiskeys, um, simple syrups, if I decide to make different types of simple syrups, bitters, and other components, along with some other things that are tucked around in here. So this allows me to set down, make drinks for myself, for others as, we come, as, as they come through. And it's just turned into a really, really fun hobby. Everybody seems to enjoy the fact that I'm able to um, drink rather large while living in a rather small environment. I worked remotely for about 10 years, so I'm real comfortable working remotely. I've had a couple of different little companies over the years as well. So my background's risk management and insurance, corporate America stuff. But in the process of that, I've also kept, I've had a couple of different photography companies. I used to do race photography, product photography, website or company comes back up whenever I need it to, which allows me a way of making money on that. Uh, the other thing is, I have, as I mentioned earlier, I do have a, I still have a house back in Denver that's rented out right now. So that provides me a little bit of income. I've also got another rental property down in Colorado Springs. So I've got a little bit of passive income that way. And I'm probably going to go ahead and start up the photography company again just because it's something fun for me to do and then allows me to uh, write off some of my expenses that are on the road. So the website for the van is suspiciouswhitevan.com and I do have the domain name Scott Warner and it's W-O-E-R-N-E-R -E -E and I also do custom harmonicas as well. <laughs> so I do repair work and actually build custom harmonicas for players of, around the world. Um, and it was just something that I got into years ago. I picked up the harmonica, wanted to learn how to play it. I was born and raised in Memphis. I'm a blues guy. I love it. Unfortunately, I found out I'm more mechanical than musical. But I had some really great harmonica players and musicians. They kind of took me under their wing and helped me play a little bit. But one of the things is, because I am mechanical, and I immediately started taking them apart to see if I could make them work better. And in the process of that, did some work for a couple of the other players who really liked what I did. I seemed to have a knack for it. That started out its own little business as well. So that's kind of a, a tight-knit group that I work with, mostly professional players that play a lot. And I end up having just stacks of their harmonicas around that when they need something, they call me up and say, can you do a couple of A's or G's or C's for me and send them out. So I'll sit down and pull a couple of those together and send it out. Once again, uh, it's multiple small revenue streams. You don't have to make big money from any one thing. If you've got a couple of hobbies and other means of income that allow you to generate small pieces of income, the great thing about that is if any one of them goes away, you're then not suddenly in a panic looking for something to support your entire lifestyle you'll still have enough money coming in from the others, hopefully if you balance it right, that you can afford to lose any one of those. It's smart to have your own sources of income that are under your control for as best as you can make them. Yep. So that's kind of how I support this lifestyle. That, and I live really moderately as well, which is um, easy to do on the road if you're not constantly moving from spot to spot. The main ones that I work on are Honer Harmonica. So, I carry my little quick kit with me, which has kind of the main keys that all your blues songs and stuff are done in. So, and what I actually do is customize the Honer harmonicas. So I'll take these and then take them apart. And inside here, anybody that knows anything um, about harmonicas, there's little bitty brass reeds that move up and down, which are how the sound come out of it. And depending upon how they're curved and how tight the channels are and everything determines upon how easy it is to play the harmonica to get the bend notes and everything that you hear in a lot of the blues songs 
um, are to get some of the other notes that are kind of hidden in the harmonica as you'll have to get for some of the jazz tunes and stuff. So it allows you to do things what they call overblows, which is a it's an older technique, but it's become a lot more popular now as people are using harmonicas in a lot of different ways, you know, as we're constantly trying to reinvent and come up with new ways of music. Um, so I work with different players based upon their style, help the harmonica work better for their playing style. And if they're playing a full night's gig where they're up on stage for four hours, if you don't have an instrument that plays well, by the end of the night, you're exhausted. And if they all play differently, you're constantly trying to retune your embouchure as you grab different harmonicas. So that's the important thing that I try to do is match the playing style of all the harmonicas to them. So whether they're picking up a D harmonica or a C harmonica or an A harmonica, it's going to play very similarly and they're not having to refigure how they're playing that particular instrument on a song. Then that allows you, um, you know, just to have a good set of quality instruments, much like sending a guitar to or a guitar to a luthier. It's just a, a little bit of playing and a fun hobby to have on the road because they're easy to carry. Uh, this is the suspicious white van. So Great. You can find me at suspicious underscore white underscore van on Instagram, or um, there's a link to my Instagram account off of suspiciouswhitevan.com. Got any questions? Email me. Great. Thanks so much, Scott. That was fun. <laughs> Thanks, Joni. I appreciate it. Well, I hope you really enjoyed that tour of Scott's van. Um, I think it just has some really fun stuff, and uh, and we're going to let him take us out with his harmonica plane. This is Joni with the Gallo Van. Enjoy your journey. Mm -hmm.